Hi everyone, my name is Peter Faria and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below, click on the bell to turn on the notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Intelligent Suite Assisted Modeling. Before I say anything, let me mention, of course, that the Intelligent Suite is an add-on to Outlook Designer. So what you can see right now on my screen would not be available to you with the default Outlook Designer license. You are required to have the Intelligent Suite add-on license in order for you to use what I'm about to show you. All right. When it comes to the example right here, we have a data set containing information when it comes to customers uh, about loans, right? So we have a data set showing whether someone that took out a loan actually paid out the loan or if they went overdue. So what we do is actually be able to predict for our new customers, whether based upon the same variables that we can see, whether they will be uh, not paying the loan or not, right? So we'll be using the overdue column right over here for us to be able to predict this. So, a couple of things to understand when it comes to the system modeling. What we're gonna be doing here today, it is of course code free, like the Altrix platform, as well as it gives you the ability of doing everything with help. So Altrix will guide you building out your best model possible, all right? There are some specific things to be aware of when it comes to using the assisted modeling tool which are, as I'm, as I'm about to mention. The first one is that you are limited to some specific data types. So for example, date would not actually work when it comes to the, a data type that you can input into the system modeling. You would not recognize that. So that's why over here, the start date column, we're using it as a string column, all right? As you can see, string right over here. When it comes to the system modeling, we're going to be actually developing everything using a different window. So in order for you to see this view, drag it in the assistive modeling tool and run the workflow so you can then load the start assistive modeling button. As you do this, let's click on it. And there you go. This will be the first window that you will be able to see whenever you open the assistive modeling window, the start here. Just a guide in case you want to use it. I'll be walking you guys through all the steps that you can see over here. Of course, Autrex does give you a little explanation on all the different steps that you will go through to build it out. In case you don't want to see it again, you can just, of course, check this box. So let's start. The first thing is, of course, defining what do we want to predict. In this case, I want to predict the overdue column right over here. So all I have to do is just click the button then Altrix will let me know whether this is a classification type of example or a regression type of example. And you can see by default, Altrix already understands that this is a classification type of example. It does give you a little understanding of what you're actually doing over here. In our case, the variable that we are trying to predict is a yes and no variable, overdue or not overdue. So that's why it is a classification type of example. Then. Just go ahead and click on next. You can say that it's the same. All right, it is overdue the column that you're selecting. In case you want to change it, you need to go back and redo everything, which of course is fine. So go ahead and click OK. And then over here, you're going to have two different options. If you prefer to have a more manual approach to understand what's being built, you can select a step by step. But you do also have the automatic way. The automatic way, you're not going to be doing anything, everything will be done for you, and you're just going to see the output. In our case, we're going to be doing a step-by-step, -step, which is a default option over here. You can click on Next. Now, Altrix will give us all the information when it comes to our columns, right? So it's going to be saying, this specific column, does it represent an ID-like column or a numeric or classification column, right? You can see the some information when it comes to city, first name, street, birthday, 
started, ending, and last name are being considered as ID. And you can see that by default, objects will drop these columns because an ID type of field would not properly be able to be used in order for us to try to predict a different variable using that, of course. You can see the actual ID column, it's kind of doesn't really know itself. So you can say it is a numeric or an ID field. Then we can actually change it to be an ID type of field. And you can see all the other columns over here are either categorical or numeric. We can, of course, always change them. But in this case, we actually want to keep it. So what's going to happen is that right now, Altrix will drop all of these features because they're not a good representation to our model in case we actually want to run this. So what we can do is just remove them from our analysis. You can see on the right hand side, Altrix does give you a little preview of the type of data that you can actually see. You can see as I click on the actual rows show up over here, it's a preview as well as Altrix does create a calculation and you can kind of understand that based on its calculations, you understand that this field is at least almost 100% ID type of field. You do have a little glossary over here to better understand what Altrix is showing you on the other window, but then of course, uh, kind of straightforward, but if you ever need to read this, you can of course read this or use the help page, of course. So after this, we can just click on next. And now Altrix will ask us, if you do have any missing fields using the columns that we did not remove in the previous step, if there are any missing fields and no data, what do we want to do with that, right? You can see the credit score column contains 7% being missing data. So we can either update that and manipulate that outside of the system modeling window or actually over here. In our case, we have a drop feature option. Same case, let's say that, oh, I have some missing values. I should never have missing values. Let's drop that. Or maybe I want to replace this my mean, my median, or my mode, of course. You can see the Altrix recommends the median, so you can go ahead and use the median. And like the other step, you can see that you have some information on the right hand side, as well as a little glossary for you to better understand what each single little thing over here does represent. After we actually select our credit score to replace the no data or the missing data with median, we can go ahead and click on next. Now we will be selecting our variables. So Altrix is creating a correlation analysis in the background and understanding whether a specific feature is or it is not a good predictor. You can see that using the columns that we did not remove, Altrix ran an analysis and saying that six of them, they are a good predictor and one of them is way too highly associated with the target. So sometimes you may want to use this, sometimes you may not. It really depends on the use case and your overall understanding of the data set. Of course, you can always go back and recreate the workflow and the system modeling without or with a feature that you had dropped before. So just of course play around with it until you have something that actually fits your needs. We can see over here, credit score is saying highly associated with target. And we can see the graphing over here saying it is not too highly associated, it's just highly associated. So of course you can play around with it and see if this fits your need or not. For our case, we can keep it, but in case you want to remove it, just uncheck the box and then you can see that now credit score would not be used for this. But in our case, I will keep it. I can then go ahead and click on next. And now after we did all the manipulation, we are ready to then select the model. Altrix based upon our input is saying, all right, those four models over here, these four models, run them and see which one gives you the best option. You can see that it does a little, gives you some pros and cons. It talks about all the models that you have. You do have the option of not running any of the models or just running some of the models or running all of them by just checking and unchecking the box right over here. In our case, let's go ahead and run everything. So go ahead and click on run select algorithms. And now Altrix is running all the models as you can see on the left hand side. Let's just wait a little bit. So it runs, decision three model ran, then as, a, as the other models run, you can already see what Altrix will give you. Right over here, 
It's giving you an accuracy score, a balanced accuracy score, a log loss, and the AU, AUC right over here. It's going to be comparing all of them, as you can see. Now, from this point on, Altrix is letting you know, all right, which one gives you the best accuracy? But there are other things for you to consider as well, of course, right? Um, right here on the right hand side, Altrix will give you an explanation about what AUC is, log loss, balanced accuracy, and other things, of course. So ideally, you want to pick the best model for your data set, but sometimes you do not know what the best model actually is. So that's why Altrix will give you all the information. And you can see a graph over here, how everything works. And if you select any of the models right over here, as you can see, I'm selecting right now the XCG Boost 1. Right now, I'm looking at the comparison. I can go to Overview. I can see how I was able to predict. So it was around 96 to 98% accuracy when it comes to predicting positive with positive and negative with negative, of course. I can see interpretation saying, all right, this specific model read credit score as the main feature to be used and state and interest rates were not actually used because they didn't care for it. We can see the configuration that we had set up before, but then using this specific logic, you can then pick your best model for your specific analysis. For example, let's go, let's go ahead and use the one that has the accuracy of 96.9% and a log loss of 0.05. I can just click on it right over here on the left hand side. And as you can see, as I click on it, now I can actually add the model. I can add more than one model, as you can see, by just clicking a different box. But in this case, I will only add one specific model. I can then just click Add Model and Continue Workflow. Then from this point on, Altrix in the background is building the whole workflow for us. And then after it, we can just do and continue our analysis the way that we had set up before. As you can see, now the whole workflow has been developed and all the changes that we apply to our data, they are over here in these specific tools. Differences, we just simply did not configure them manually. We had used Altrix Assistive Modeling Window to build everything out for us. I now dragged it in a testing data. So before I had a training data and now I'll be testing my model with my new data set. So I can just connect my testing data to my predict val uh, values over here. I'll add a browse right afterwards. And then I'll run the workflow. And now the whole workflow is running my testing, my training data through my model, build the other model, and then I can test and validate my data set using my predict values uh, tool. And there you go. Our model has run. We ran 10,000 rows, and then you can see all the way to the right and overdue zero and overdue one column, saying whether it predicted to go overdue or not. It does give you the overdue predicted column as well, saying true or false which is overdue, yes, overdue, no. And with this, we do wrap up our example for machine learning assistive modeling using the Intelligent Suite add-on package inside of Autop Designer. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Uh, thank you so much, and then I see you guys next time. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment them below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.